What is up guys, it is Joe here from Joe Talks Wrestling and today I am giving you my WWE Extreme Rules 2019 predictions video. Before I get into the video however, I do want to say normally I would be doing reactions and I would be watching the AEW show Fight for the Fallen um, this Saturday. However, being in the UK, um, pay-per-views in the US, AEW and WWE all last until about 4 in the morning and... I can't possibly do two nights in a row with no sleep. Um, so that would literally kill me, considering I've got other commitments I have to do other than YouTube as well. It's not like this is the only thing I have to wake up and do. Um, so being able to watch both pay-per-views, I'd love to do, but it's physically not gonna be possible for me to do this time round. So as of right now, I will always be picking the WWE show over the AEW show, even though I know for a fact, pretty much, AEW show is going to be the better pay-per-view, um, but my loyalties lie with WWE right now, so that's why I'm not going to be watching the AEW Fight for the Fallen show this Saturday. Let's get straight into my Extreme Rules predictions. Okay, so the first match is Tony Nese versus Drew Gulak for Drew Gulak's Cruiserweight Championship. Plain and simple, Gulak's retaining. He won it at the last pay-per-view. I didn't predict him to win. I predicted needs to retain. But I did say that I wouldn't be surprised if Drew Gulak won. And he did. So at Stomping Grounds, literally last month, uh, not even last month, I think it was only like three weeks ago, um, Drew Gulak won the Cruiserweight Championship. So there's no way in hell that he's losing it. Next up, we've got the Raw Tag Team Championship match between the current champions, The Revival and The Usos. What is going on with the Raw Tag Team division right now? Honestly, I don't care. <laughs> it sounds, I'm so just, it's like the tag division is just sort of like so up in the air at the moment on Raw. On SmackDown, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying the whole like, uh, whole Daniel Bryan, New Day and uh, Heavy Machinery thing. I'm really enjoying that on SmackDown. However, Raw, it's just not really entertaining me. Um, so screw it. I'm going with the, the Usos. I feel like, Maybe they might play hot potato with it, the Revival and the Usos, go back and forth a few times. But I really want to see the Usos have the Raw Tag Team Championships, so I'm predicting the Usos to win. Next up, we've got a match that was announced on SmackDown for weeks now. Um, Alistair Black has been doing these little segments backstage where he's begging, he's praying for someone to knock on the door, someone to fight him. Literally two days ago on SmackDown, someone did, and that man was Cesaro. So this will be a great match. Um, both fantastic wrestlers. Can't wait for this. However, I do think that Alistair Black is winning. Um, it will kill all his momentum if he loses this match, basically. But at the same time, Cesaro's not been doing too bad recently, and I would want Cesaro to win. But Alistair Black takes priority in this scenario, so Alistair Black is winning. Next up, we've got the United States Championship match between Ricochet and AJ Styles. And this um, is one of their matches that I really think could go either way. Obviously, Ricochet is fresh as the United States Champion. He only won the belt at stomping grounds. But AJ turned heel on Raw. And normally when someone turns heel, to give them that big mega heel push, they'll slap a title on them. So I think it could do great if AJ wins, but at the same time, I really want Ricochet to hold the title for longer. Um, I think what could potentially happen is AJ Styles wins, but oh, but then they done the screwy finish the other week when AJ Styles beat him. I don't know. I really don't know. I'm just going to say Ricochet to retain. Yeah, I'm just going to go with Ricochet to retain, but I'm not going to be surprised in the slightest if anything else happens. Um, this one's really unpredictable, actually. Yeah, really don't know, but let's just say Ricochet is going to win. But if I'm proven wrong, I'm proven wrong. So next up, we got the SmackDown Tag Team Championship match between Daniel Bryan and Rowan, Heavy Machinery, and the New Day's Xavier Woods and Big E. This is a triple threat match, meaning that Daniel Bryan and Rowan don't have to be pinned to lose the championships. However, I do think that Daniel Bryan and Rowan will be retaining here. Um, it will be mega awesome to see Kofi retain at this show as well and have the New Day hold a, a tag team titles and the world title. That would be awesome. However, I don't think it's going to happen. I think Daniel Bryan and Rowan are going to retain. Um, and yeah, Heavy Machinery, I'd like the, to see them with the SmackDown Tag Team Championships. But at the same time, I feel like it's still quite a big commitment for them being a new team. And I don't think that, not necessarily them, but I don't think that 
we are ready to see them hold the titles yet. I feel like it might be a make or break situation and I feel like they should have more time to develop and more time to, you know, just just be on the main roster, get the feel of it before they win a championship. Maybe they can win it at SummerSlam um, next month. That would be cool with me. Uh, but however, I do think that Daniel Bryan and Rowan will be retaining on this show. Next up, we've got the SmackDown Women's Championship being defended in a handicap match. Bayley versus Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross. Lots of different things can happen with this. I've seen Sasha Banks return rumours. Um, that could happen, I guess. We've got Alexa Bliss winning. Um, and if it's a handicap match, the only way I can... Yours by Willie Nelson and Merle Haggard on Amazon Music. Alexa, stop. That scared me, bro. It's because I said, it's because I said Alexa Bliss. Whoa, and just started playing some next level country song. Anyway, <laughs> continuing. Um, so yeah, I think Bliss could um, could win, but at the same time, where it is a handicap match, what I believe is going to happen, what I'm taking from it is if Bailey was dropping the strap, um, I think it would be whoever pins her becomes the champion. Because they can't be co-champions. We saw that with Lakel in like 2010, and that just didn't work. Um, so I think if Nikki pinned Bailey, Nikki would win the title. Um, I can't remember where I saw it, but it was, someone mentioned, I think it was graded um, for Cultaholic with Jack the Jobber. I think he mentioned that it could be Nikki playing the game. Everyone's saying to Nikki uh, that Bliss is messing with you. She's using you. It could be Nikki Cross that's got the mental advantage here and is actually using Alexa Bliss. Um, so that could happen. But at the same time, the easiest option to not complicate things would be to just have Bailey straight up retain. Um, but I do think that we could get maybe a Nikki Cross, not necessarily heel turn, but a sort of just... Her being like to Bliss, I knew you were trying to play me, so I played you. And Nikki pins Alexa, and Nikki wins the SmackDown Women's Championship. So I am predicting Nikki Cross to win. Next up, we've got a last man standing match between Bobbington, Lashley, and Braun Strowman. I did not give two shits about this match, if I'm honest with you, until what happened on Raw last week. Wow. Um, now I'm excited. I want to see what these two are going to do. I've seen rumours of a new stage, so that just didn't happen on Monday. Um, but what if they destroyed the stage again? Um, we could have this whole storyline of, oh, we're not replacing it again. We'll just make an entirely new one. So they could literally, if these two went on, I don't know, not, not last, obviously, but maybe like three matches before the main event, they could destroy the set. And obviously, you can, you can already hear Michael Cole on commentary being like, what are we going to do for Raw tomorrow? These two have destroyed the set. Um, so that's something that can happen. But I am predicting Braun Strowman to win. If it doesn't go to a no contest, Braun's going to win. Next up, we've got the biggest meh match that we all feel that we realistically should be excited for, but we're not. Um, and that is The Undertaker. Obviously, you should always be excited for The Undertaker, but, but no one ever is because... It's just, it sucks watching him. As much as we all respect him and love The Undertaker, I don't like watching his matches anymore because I feel like it's chipping away at my childhood. It's making me look at The Undertaker as this man that's, like, he was always this immortal being. And now seeing him in genuine pain and, you know, not being able to really do a good match, it just ruins it for you. So that's why I'm not really excited. Um, I mean... Roman Reigns and Undertaker versus Shane and Drew McIntyre. I've seen rumours saying that this could lead to Drew McIntyre versus Undertaker at SummerSlam, which I did already. JTW SummerSlam 2018, my pick fed show, Undertaker Drew McIntyre for the World Heavyweight title. I already did that. Um, so, yeah, Roman and Taker are winning, realistically. Um, hopefully pinning Shane. I really want them to just like destroy Shane, like spear, tombstone, um, Superman punches galore, just absolutely batter Shane to the point where he's just never on TV again. Yeah, please do that. That'd be great, mate. Next up, we've got the WWE Championship match between Kofi Kingston and Samoa Joe. 
And um, I heard rumours going around that Kofi was uh, working through an injury right now. Um, it's not, a, I don't think it's a severe one. I literally heard it from like two sources that are like, so I don't think it's even really true. Um, Kofi seems fine. So what I think is going to happen is he's going to beat Samoa Joe. Um, like I said, I want Kofi to hold the belt until at least SummerSlam. Um, give him a good lengthy run because it will most likely be his one and only run with the WWE Championship. So why not make it a lengthy one? Um, however, Paul Heyman did tease that Brock Lesnar could be cashing in. He said, spoiler alert, and he hasn't said spoiler alert and since before WrestleMania 30 when Brock broke the streak. But at the same time, he did turn around and go, am I messing with you? I know exactly what that was. Um, if you was to ask me what that was, I would just tell you that... That was just WWE's way of making you want to tune in to see what's happening. They're not guaranteeing Brock's going to cash in because they've guaranteed that before. And fans have got mad because he hasn't cashed in. But they're sort of saying it, could it happen? Couldn't it happen? To keep it in your head so you tune into the show instead of just missing it. Because they want viewership, basically. Of course they want viewership. They're on pay-per-view. Um, but, yeah, so I think Kofi's winning. Um, if Samoa Joe wins, it will be a big shock. Like, I'll, I'll be okay with it, I guess. Because Kofi, I think, has he, has he hit 100 days yet? Um, I'm not sure. If Kofi's hit 100 days, I'll be happy with it. Uh, I just wanted him to get to at least that. But if Samoa Joe wins, that's the shock of the night right there. Um, that would be awesome. But at the same time, Brock could cash in and beat Kofi. And I feel like if Brock does cash in and beat Kofi, Kofi might be injured and might have to take some time off. Um, but it is what it is, really. I'm predicting Kofi Kingston to retain. And next up, we've got what will inevitably be the main event that no one cares about. This is the least exciting match on the show, which is really sad when you think about it because it's got the Universal and Raw Women's Championships being defended at the same time. But I just don't care. I really don't care. I'm one of, Se I love Seth Rollins so much. He's my favorite wrestler, but I hate the fact that they're um, involving his real-life relationship with Becky Lynch into storyline because it's just cringeworthy, um, and I'm not a fan of it. Um, they've unveiled this new T-shirt that says, The Man's Man, and oh my God, uh, I just want to wipe my nose with it. Like, it just, get in the bin, burn it, take it out back and shoot it. It's not good. Um, stuff's really not going good. Baron Corbin and Lacey Evans. Here we've got the two most annoying people on the roster they're not mega hills they've just got genuine go away heat uh no one likes corbin no one likes lacy i'm literally yet to run into someone that says to me i like lacy evans i like baron corbin don't happen it just doesn't so if they win um i will laugh i'm not gonna lie i'm so uninvested in this right now normally i would be angry in a situation like this like i was really angry when brock won the money in the bank but if if Lacey Evans and Baron Corbin win at this pay-per-view and they take the titles, I will laugh because that's just how bad it's been. It, like, that's how bad it is nowadays. Screw it. Um, I'm predicting Seth and Becky to retain, of course. But yeah, if that happens, I'm just going to laugh. Um, so that's that, basically. Uh, Extreme Rules this Sunday, streaming on the WWE Network, free for new subscribers. Um, and yeah... I'm really not excited. If Zach wasn't staying around to watch this show with me, I really wouldn't have a care in the world about it, honestly. Because I'm just so done. These pay-per-views are trash. We need a big pay-per-view. Give us SummerSlam. Give us SummerSlam now. I know it's only a month away, but give us it now. We don't... Stomping Grounds was garbage. Extreme Rules, I'm predicting, going to be, like, mediocre as hell. Um, there is some few match stipulations, so... Hopefully they do get a bit extreme in times, but you know, considering neither of the world title matches are even extreme rules stipulations, it's a bit pointless. But that was my extreme rules predictions, ladies and gents. I do hope you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to give this video a like, comment, and subscribe. Tell me your predictions in the comment section down below, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.